Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another Pick a Card reading. This one is focusing on what are your magical powers. And if you watched my what are your psychic powers video, that one was more focusing on like claircognizance and clairsentience. This reading is going to be focusing more on things that are even more unbelievable. You know, if you ever felt like you should be able to fly or let you want to levitate or float objects telekinetically, bilocate, cast spells and have them actually manifest, all of that kind of more tangible, more unbelievable, crazy stuff. And if you'd like to skip straight to your cards, go ahead and pick your pile and the timestamps are in the description box. Uh, but I have a little bit of a message here first. Essentially, it is really hilarious to me to see myself making a video like this because I come out of a paradigm where I was just, I was a debunker. I wasn't just a, a skeptic. I was a debunker. I went out of my way <laughs> to debunk every single crazy theory, every single crazy idea, all, anything that could, anything that went beyond our normally perceivable physical reality, I just said that was crazy. <laughs> and, you know, I would never believe anything until it was proven in, you know, academic research over and over again, all of that. I was just absolutely a debunker. And, you know, that kind of pro thought processes, those are still inside of me. So it's really funny to be sitting here from a perspective where now I really believe it is entirely possible for us in our lifetimes to remember how to do things like levitate <laughs> and walk through walls and bilocate all of those things because I know that we have done them before it it's like I'm calling them magical powers but that's not really it right what it is is those are our soul gifts those are the things we've done in past lives when we lived in times and places where things were different <laughs> and we could do those things. Those were our birthright. That was just how life was. But, you know, the last few thousand years on earth, things have not been like that. They have been really pushing us down into living only in our physical reality. And, you know, there's lots of reasons for that. And that's just part of the cycle. And that was just part of the paradigm we're in. And that's all fine. Um, but moving forward from right now, <laughs> whenever you're watching this onwards, that's that's going to be fading into the past and we're going to be having so many more opportunities in our lifetime to open up to things that might seem completely unbelievable right now. And I'm saying this all just from my own personal experience. You know, I'm no longer sitting in that debunking mindset. I decided to just give my mind a chill pill just for a moment and to conduct an experiment where I just lived and experienced things and was open to new experiences, open to experiences that I thought might be crazy or might be unbelievable. And I just, I, for a year now, I've been running that experiment and I've been experiencing things that past me completely would not have believed in at all and would have really ridiculed people for believing in. So there's just a message coming through here to just be open to unbelievable experiences and also to don't let anybody try to cut you down, right? Don't let anybody tell you that that's nonsense or that you're crazy. Trust deep, deep down in your bones. You know, if you know deep, deep down in your bones that you just should be able to float up into the air or something like that, then trust in that. Trust that, you know, that feeling isn't coming from nowhere. That is your soul talking to you. That is your soul remembering that you have levitated before and that you can remember to do that again once conditions in your environment are conducive to that. So just just lean into that. I, I'm really excited and I've had some really weird experiences lately, guys. And so I'm not just saying this just for no reason. I'm saying this because I am experiencing things that are unbelievable. So I think that's that. That's my spiel. Let's do the readings. Hey, pal one, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys kind of need to be careful about what you say and even what you think because you can manifest your thoughts and your words, your intentions really easily. It's like you think of something, you imagine something, and 
if you speak something, definitely it's going to come out of your mind and then manifest in reality and reflect itself. So I don't know what magical power <laughs> that is, but I almost want to think of you as master manifestors. There's something really direct here. Like you guys can directly shift timelines or get the time, get your most ideal timelines to resonate right along with you. But the other side of that is if you're really stuck in negative thought patterns or if you're saying negative things or things that, you know, not necessarily negative, but things that you don't necessarily want to come to fruition, they might happen anyway. <laughs> like, because you got this ace of crystals. So this is the ace of swords. This is your mind. This is your intention. The subtext up here is brilliance. This is I can just imagine like a thought crystallizing very almost literally in your mind. On, on some level, your thoughts are creating holographic projects it, projections, and then you are projecting those thoughts out into the world. I really feel like this could be through your words. Some of you, if you are singers or writers or however you communicate with the world, even some of you are, are practice witchcraft and do specific spells uh, maybe you use sigils or light language. However you communicate your ideas, your will out into the world, maybe through your art, it it is projecting outwards and <laughs> then it manifests in physical form. Three of worlds, this would be the three of pentacles, nurturing. So you absolutely have the power to use this for your greatest benefit. And that is actually part of what these oracle cards are talking about, where like I said, you guys need to be careful <laughs> to be navigating your energy in a way that you are only projecting and manifesting the things that you want. I really feel like if you guys got into a negative, if you guys get into negative thinking, you got you guys could spiral out of control really fast. Could you? You'd be like, oh, okay, so you have some unexpected bill show up, and now you're like, ah, oh, you know, why do I keep getting unexpected bills? And then just. The more you think about that, it's almost kind of that stereotypical view of like the law of attraction. You think of your, you're fixating on your unexpected bills and then just more bills just keep piling up, piling up. You guys would really want to almost do that stereotypical law of attraction thing where you want to focus your thoughts on more positive things. You want to think of, you know, money showing up in the mail and money would show up. That's, <laughs> that's what this is. You know, with this Libra, I balance card. This is, yeah, you guys need to find the balance. And this is also that air energy going along with the Ace of Crystals. So much air energy. I really get a throat chakra vibe here. You guys, I can feel your energy projecting out of your throat. I don't think you guys are afraid to speak up or speak out. Your, your energy is so projecting. And I feel like some people's energy, not you guys, but other people, their energy like emanates outwards from all points in their body. But you guys, your energy is very direct, very pointed, very out in one direction, very specific. Like you guys have something specific to say, something specific to do. And if you focus on that, it will absolutely manifest. <laughs> absolutely. Just the only caution here is to ask your soul. Make sure you are in tuned to yourself. You are aligned with your highest, best timelines. And don't forget to align your best timeline with everybody else's best timeline, right? We can have our cake and eat it too, moving forward from here on out. You can have your best life and thrive and flourish and get everything that you want, essentially, without hurting anybody else. The service to self doesn't have to be at the expense of others. You can serve yourself through serving others. That is how you guys will find the greatest reward in your life when you realize that when you help other people, when you're serving other people, that just comes right back at you and really quickly. Um, I just read a story the other day of the guy, actually not this tarot deck, but the guy who made this tarot deck, <laughs> the Starman Tarot. This guy, uh, this whole deck is based off of the work he did for David Bowie. And he has a story about how he had this art, you know, a little art company. And of course, that wasn't panning out because artists don't make any money. And he was about to have to go bankrupt and close the business. And 
but then he got some kind of really boring job for advertising and he was going to do it just to pay the bills, but he was really upset about it. And he went to bed that night and he was just asking the universe, like, what do I do? What do I do? And he had this dream where this like winged figure showed up and just told him, make art. <laughs> like that was the whole message, make art. And <laughs> he woke up and apparently that dream was so empowering. He knew what to do. He went into his little art business office and he canceled that boring advertising project and he just sat down and created the art that came out from the depths of his soul. And despite the fact that that was a horrible, it seemed like a horrible business move, you know, apparently that art ended up getting featured in some magazine and David Bowie saw it and then called this guy up and bam, you know, <laughs> then he was a major collaborator with David Bowie for years after that. All because he followed his passion and all because he created the art the expression that was most authentic to him, that is when everything shifted for him. That is was when he was able to accomplish everything that, that he wanted. It's almost like when you give up, that's when you get what you want. <laughs> Something about that really reminds me of, of you guys. The reminder is to stay absolutely true and in your authenticity. Ace of Crystals, this brilliance card, this Ace of Swords is also a reminder to just stay so focused in your own light, in your own, in your own unique expression of the way that you receive source energy and the way you channel it and the way you express it. Yeah. So maybe that was a little bit of a contradictory message because I said, don't forget to serve other people. That is how you, um, <laughs> that is how you will manifest what you want, but then also stay centered in your own authenticity that's because those things ideally if done most effectively will be the same thing that is maybe that's what you guys need to figure out how can you because you want to be able to you want to be able to manifest your magical powers where you say something and it comes to fruition you want to be able to write down create a sigil on paper you want to be able to write that down and have that spell work you want to be able to make a spell jar and have it absolutely a manifest like right you know you see people making i don't practice with witchcraft but some of you probably do i'm sure some of you do you guys want to make a spell jar right and <laughs> for you know manifesting abundance you want to be able to make one and have like the next day have money show up you want to see that work and maybe you're frustrated going why isn't it working what do i need to do in order to manifest this you need to get you need to figure out how you can live in your complete sovereign authenticity, your complete unique brilliance and never backing down from that, sitting completely in your authenticity, but simultaneously serving others at the same time. I know I repeated myself saying simultaneously at the same time. Sorry. <laughs> it bothers me when I do stuff like that. Um, and you might think, well, there's no way I can do both sitting in my authenticity and serving others. I can't do both at the same time because if I have to serve others, that's not authentic to me. There's nothing, my authenticity doesn't, doesn't serve others. Or you might think that, you know, serving others has to be really practical. Like you have to go work at a soup kitchen or you have to give to charity or do something like that. And that's just, you know, tedious or you just don't have time or you don't have the money. Well, this is the root of the problem. How do you do both? You might need to think entirely outside of the box. There is something out there that you love that is entirely authentic to your unique expression and and will also serve the greater good. It will be part of your mission. It's some kind of artistic project, some kind of creative business, some kind of spiritual business, some kind of technical project. It could be cutting down trees, you know, like like lumberjacking. Maybe you're re replanting trees while you're doing it, right? But there's something out there that it's just to throw out some examples. There's something out there that you just haven't discovered yet that will synchronize all of this for you. Absolutely synchronize all of it. And to find out what that is, you need to ask your soul. Because it's going to be different for each of you. Ask your soul and follow that trajectory. I can tell you just, uh, you know, I'm the most obvious example here. All my life, I've been so lazy. I never did anything unless I was getting paid for it. And I didn't even want to work to get paid. I just I just couldn't handle working uh, horrible, stupid, mundane jobs. And I just, I'm really like low energy. And <laughs> I never want to do anything. I'm just lazy. I want to sit in bed all day and read. I thought I would spend my whole life just trying to stop working so I can sit in bed all day and read. And then I discovered tarot. And I just so much, I so loved every thing about it. And then I started making these videos and I'm just so excited. 
you know, every week to make more videos. And I'm excited to make videos for my private clients. And I just, I literally love every second about it. And the great, the amazing thing to me is that I love every second about it. I love it so much. I do it for free. And I mean, I also get paid for it a little bit with my private clients, but um, you know, I'm nowhere near close to making a living doing this at all, but I don't care because I just love doing it so much and I get to be entirely authentic. I get to be completely myself when I'm doing this. Like when I'm making these videos, you're just getting me as I am. I, I can't do this if I'm not authentic. Like somehow making a terror reading video while being inauthentic, that would be like impossible for me. It would be so draining and exhausting. It would just be like, it would turn into work. So the fact that I can just turn this camera on and be completely authentic and make a video that a few other people will enjoy and receive a little bit of inspiration from, I am sitting in my authenticity, I'm doing exactly what I love, and I am in my own small way just serving the greater good. So I never would have believed this is possible, and I never would have believed I in my life would buy a tarot deck, let alone make tarot videos. But So there's something like that out there for you guys, and you just need to find out what it is. And once you do that, once you ask your soul and find out what that is, then you will be able to take your intention, your intention, this Ace of Crystals, crystallize it and manifest it. Look at this like fruitful garden. It will manifest very specifically. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. You guys have a lot going on with Saturn. You have Aquarius, I know, and we have Saturn depicted up here. Then we, down here we have Devil's Play, which is obviously this deck's version of the Devil card. Devil represents Capricorn. Capricorn is represented by Saturn. And on the Six of Worlds card, we have Saturn inexplicably again. So... Something, something going on with Saturn, and I like this devil, Devil's Play card. I like how it represents this Saturnian energy, because so often the Devil card is all about addictions and compulsions and, you know, self-entrapment. But more and more, I'm really enjoying the transmuted, higher-level energies of these archetypal images that are in these tarot cards, and this deck does that really well with this card. Devil's Play. This is really Dionysian. You know, these are representations of Bacchus, God of Wine. This is all about indulging in the pleasures of life and kind of going a little bit to the dark side, but in a way that is actually empowering and not necessarily unhealthy. You know, we don't need to get all moralistic about it. That, that this card really puts morals aside and it is just feeling your almost animalistic impulses and really feeling that, indulging in it, making the best of it and learning from that, knowing that as long as you didn't do anything really bad when you were, you know, partying up with Bacchus or something, right? As long as you didn't do anything really bad, there was nothing wrong with with that. You know, you can go on a week-long bender and do all kinds of things that you might wake up and go, oh, I kind of wish I hadn't have done that. Well, but if no harm was done, then no harm was done. And maybe that was an expression of your shadow. Maybe that was an important just cycle for you to go through. Maybe that was the conclusion of a darker cycle. Sometimes, you know, you got to let loose and let your shadow come out to play. Let the devil come out to play. And in terms of your magical powers, I really feel like you guys had past lives where you were ceremonial magicians. I'm getting like vibes of the Freemasons, um, some of the darker cults, occult practices, um, especially with this Aquarius, Aquarius thing and all this Saturn. I can, I imagine somebody, um, you know, from a couple centuries ago, using a quill to write down formulas on a parchment, that kind of thing. Definitely the darker occult practices, because that is combining the 
the knowledge and the wisdom I like I can I, I feel like I'm in a in a really old timey occult library where you used your mind to create to gain knowledge and wisdom but then there's also that darker side to it you know where you were probably in some kind of sketchy rituals <laughs> I don't feel anything really dark here. I'm not feeling, you know, satanic rituals or, you know, some of the really horrible, really truly evil distortions of ritual. I'm not sensing anything, you know, really, really off the deep end, but, you know, blood magic, maybe animal sacrifices at the worst of it, that kind of thing, where you had to use formulas, you used knowledge, you used your wisdom. And you were also really felt free to explore that and express it. You were, these were probably shadow lives for you that I'm picking up on. Um, and that's fine because we all go through shadow lives. There's, this isn't, there's no judgment here and I'm not moralizing. Really, truly, I've had shadow lives as well. I've been in my shadow in this life. This is, we're, we're looking at this from a much uh, more zoomed out bird's eye perspective. So yeah, you guys have an aspect of yourself where you have been a ceremonial magician and really tuning into your wisdom and your knowledge in order to like do alchemy. I'm really a, like alchemist thing coming in here. And also this card, Soulcraft. Really, when I saw this, I, I really thought that was had something to do with formulas, like Freemason magical formulas. I'm thinking of Crowley and people like the Theosophists, people who, who hung out with uh, Edgar Allan Poe. You guys might benefit a lot from reading that kind of 19th century occultist literature. There's something might be in there for you. So the question is, what do you do with all of this <laughs> in this life? I've so far been tuning into your past lives and this kind of darker ceremonial magical vibe. But what is that going to be for you now? Luckily, this all ends with the Three of Cups and the subtext here is love. So even if you had these shadow lives where you did these kind of darker practices, um, you're going to be putting that behind you and you're going to be able to use these skills, use these soul gifts, you know, be able to remember them and transmute them and use them in a way that you probably find <laughs> more palatable. You know, you find better, you find more resonant for your soul. You're going to find a way to use your soul's craft you're going to find a way to do these magical practices, this witchcraft for some of you, maybe um, these alchemical practices, and it's going to be synergistic. Six of worlds. This is the six of pentacles. Synergy. This is everything coming together. Man, I, I don't know why your guys' reading is really like past past lives for me. I feel like you have had, you've been training in all of your past lives or for many of your past lives on earth, you've been training, going through all of these initiations in different magical practices, different cults, different modalities of learning and using your skills and different ways of looking at the cosmos. And in this life, you're bringing that all together, all of that different knowledge, all of that dis different wisdom from many different cultures, I think, and many different um, styles of thought, many different schools of thought. And you're going to be synergizing all of that. Look at how all of these different things are coming together. That's really cool. And in this life, you figure out how to use it for good. I feel that some of you might be in some kind of, or eventually in your life might be part of some kind of group. For some of you, it could be a coven. For others of you, it could be some kind of, you know, I hate to use the word cult, but I know there are some cults that are not culty at all and are really just a, that's more of a different word for a coven. Like the Dragon Rouge cult. The Dragon Rouge cult. If <laughs> do you any of you know the band Therian? I, I'm vibing so hard on Therian right now. I really love them. They are they're really cool, and some of their members are part of this cult called the Dragon Rouge, the Red Dragon cult, and they do you know modern mystical practices that do, that do skew kind of dark, but I don't I mean dark and you know just an energetic sense, not in an evil sense. I've, as far as I can tell, those people are good people and they don't do anything evil, but their practices and their kind of mindset skews towards the darkness. 
in kind of like a goth way. Imagine like goth spirituality. <laughs> that's the kind of, that's the kind of vibe here, but you are bringing this back out to the love and back out to the light. And this three of cups, guys, there is something going on with the number three. Have you guys been seeing the number three? I have been plagued by the number three, the, and just like the concept of three, the concept of trinities and triads. And it, it is plaguing me everywhere in the weirdest ways. And I feel like there's something I'm supposed to know about it or that I'm supposed to realize about the power of three. There's some kind of power of three and I don't know what it is. And I think you guys are kind of in the same place with that. There's something you guys are going to have to realize or figure out about the power of three. You probably know it in your past lives. You already know what the power of three is. You need to remember that. What is the power of three? That is important to you. And somehow the power of three is going to unlock a lot of love and light for you. Look at this. Love. Love. So you are going to really... Wow, this is this got really deep, guys. Okay. So you've had these kind of darker, more shadowy timelines in your past lives where you did these darker, shadowy, magical practices. These ceremonial practices. These rituals that kind of went dark. But part, I think part of what you came here to do is to live those out, transmute them, and by doing that, you heal that whole paradigm. You heal all those timelines and you set a new standard, a new energetic way of doing things. You're going to take all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all that just delicious and fascinating occult knowledge and transmute it, bring it back into the light and find a way to use it and utilize it for the good, for your love, that is, that's literally part, part of your mission to have gone through those shadow lives, to have done darker practices, and now you're transmuting them and bringing it all back to the light. Yeah, that is super fucking cool, guys. And uh, I'm sorry if I repeated, I think I was repeating myself quite a bit in this reading. Uh, there's something stuttery about this energy, stuttery and repetitive. <laughs> I could feel you guys in your past lives, like sitting over some old medieval textbook, like made out of parchment and just repetitively writing out formulas and memorizing things and spilling ink bottles and st <laughs> stuff like that. I can feel you in these creepy chambers wearing black robes, you know, doing maybe animal sacrifices or, you know, cutting your hand and doing blood magic. Kind of <laughs> some, I know some of that, it sounds really stereotypical and almost unbelievable. Like that's the kind of thing that only happens in movies. The thing is, well, there are actually people that do that today, right now, like this very day that you're watching this. So it does happen. It is real. And you guys are moving forward. Once you remember your soul gifts, once you remember this wisdom that you gained in past lives, and once you figure out how to use it for your greater good and everybody else's greater good, you're going to have so much power. Like you're going to be able to do a ceremony or a ritual and really see the results of that echo out, ripple out. You will be very effective as long as you are doing it from a place of love and for a place of love. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Yep, that's finally the end of it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal three, welcome to your reading. You guys are healers. That came out loud and clear. The first two cards I flipped up were your oracle cards. You have part of fortune, increase, paired right beside, nothing has gone wrong with the yin yang. This card actually was super activating to me a few months ago, or maybe it was just a few weeks ago. Um, after you see this card, guys, pay, pay attention to the yin yang. Where do you see it? You're going to start seeing it in places you would totally not expect it, like your grandma's bathroom, something like that. <laughs> um, so basically, nothing has gone wrong. Part of fortune increase. You guys have been through a tough time and you're start maybe like probably really recently have been feeling like your life collapsed or just that you had some kind of major setback and you're definitely feeling that because you got the four cups down here. That is just going like, you know, look at this guy. He's like, Oh, whoa, it was me. Why did this have to happen? Why does everything suck? Everything is so shitty. Oh my God. You know, 
<laughs> I was actually just thinking about how if I ever got to make a tarot deck, um, I would put little, I would do it by putting little captions of my own interpretation of the cards on there. And I would call the four of cups card, the salty bitch card <laughs> because, um, or the sulky bitch card because the four of cups, we always get that when we are, we're just, we're feeling so down and feeling so sulky and we just, just the, we feel like our life just sucks and that's fine. We're, we're all there, but the cool thing about this particular deck, I mean, besides just the fact that it's a really cool deck, is all of these quote-unquote negative cards, they're really about transmuting it. So this is, you can really leave this behind. You can really leave this behind. You're just sitting in this, you know, momentary, yucky, gross, you know, woe is me kind of energy. But that's only for right now. Don't worry. Nothing has wrong, gone wrong. Part of fortune, increase. Everything is about to shift for you. Everything is going to be getting better. You know, the wheel is turning. Like, and the reason I say that you guys are healers is because you had to go through this not so good times because in order to heal others, first you have to be able to heal yourself. You, you are your very first patient, you know, your very first client. You learn to heal yourself first. And of course, you can't learn to heal yourself if you've never been wounded so you guys voluntarily incarnated in this life and in your past lives as well. You know, this is part of your soul pattern. You, you've done this before. You do this over and over again. You voluntarily incarnate in with childhoods, with parents in parts of the world, just in situations that are going to hurt you because you need to be wounded. You need to go through suffering and struggle to give yourself something to heal. Basically, that is your training. Everything you've ever been through, all the shit you've ever been through, that was not a mistake. Nothing has gone wrong. Like literally internalize. I want you guys to internalize this uh, as much as you can. And I'm, I'm sorry for saying I want you to do that. I actually hate it. I hate it when people tell me I want you to do that. So I, that just came out just because I'm that enthusiastic about this. <laughs> you know? I would rephrase that as I would, you know, gently invite you to gaze at this card and remember that nothing has gone wrong. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, I feel very passionate about that because like I said, I this card was very activating to me and I really had to learn that nothing has gone wrong. And so yeah, you guys came here, you had your shitty childhoods or your difficult life experiences, whatever they are, it's, you know, those patterns are different for everybody. You only ever had those so that you could heal yourself and you only ever had to heal yourself so that you can heal others you guys is magical powers you guys are healers look at the fire coming out of this this guy's palm you guys ever feel energy in your fingers or in the palm of your hands or just even coursing through your whole body yeah you you, you guys are like energy healers there's so many different modalities some of you are probably already working in well, some of you probably do work in some kind of spiritual healing or esoteric healing. Some of you probably work in, you know, modern Western healing as nurses or doctors or therapists or sports therapists or, you know, as an x-ray technician, whatever it is, you guys are drawn to healing. And but of course, you don't need to be working in a healing profession in order to heal. You can heal people through being a cook or through being an interior designer or through being an athlete even. Whatever it is that you're doing, it's, it's also a matter, it doesn't matter what you do, it's the intention that you bring to it and how you affect people while you're doing it. So don't get hung, don't get hung up on your uh, like human career. That's not the point here. The point is that energetically you are a healer. That is part of your soul's blueprint. And that is the major manifestation of your magical power. And two of wands, look at this, holding these fiery wands in their hands, you know, the, the healing hands, right? Some, you know, if any of you are drawn to specific healing modalities like Reiki, man, there's so many out there. Reiki is the obvious one. Um, I'm actually not too particularly into healing modalities, but that's just because that's just not my calling. Um, you guys will know if there's a healing modality that calls to you, dive into that. That could be really life-changing for you. And you might think, oh, I can't be a healer. I'm just a little old me. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Look at this strength. Again, with the hands, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like light shocking off of this person's hands. 
the healing hands. The hands is how you channel out your intention and how you manipulate reality, you know, using your magical power, right? You guys have the hands of healers. And, you know, that is just the hands are just the translation point of your soul's blueprint. Man, I, I can feel the, the energy between my hands. <laughs> Almost like magnets, you know, not wanting to touch. So I'm really drawn to this. Look at this UFO, this alien face beaming this person up and also beaming information down to them. I know aliens mean something special to some of you. I'll just, I'll just point that out. Yeah. And so some of you, all of you are here to heal in some way. A lot of you might do, yeah, modern healing, like scientific healing. Some of you might work in spiritual healing. Others of you are just going to be healers in a more ambient way. Some of you are here to heal timelines, to heal timelines where you basically live out a shitty timeline where maybe you are, you live some kind of experience where you are really victimized and you live through that and it sucks, but you get to a point where you take yourself out of that. You're like, okay, enough of this crap. I'm done being a victim. I'm going to blast out of this. I'm going to blast right off. And you, like, you know, without any real assistance from anybody else, you get yourself out. You take the initiative. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You do what you need to do to protect yourself for your own self. And you get yourself out. And I mean, congratulations, good for you. That is fantastic and awesome, but that is even more fantastic and awesome than you even understand because you're not just healing yourself. You're literally healing victimization timelines when you do that. So that's just an example of how even if you aren't literally healing people by doing Reiki or by performing surgery, your literal life experience that you do is healing to the collective on an energetic level. Because say you're a victim of something, you overcome that victimization and you get yourself free of it. Well, now you've created almost like a neural pathway, you know, an energetic pathway. You've, you're one more person who has gone down that trail in the woods and that clears more of the debris that makes that path easier to go down. That makes it easier for other people to walk that path behind you. You're clearing the trail energetically for other people. And that is, <laughs> that is a big deal, guys, because you're not just healing one person at a time. You're healing whole swaths of people literally by living your life. Does that make sense? Do you, do, you, do you guys understand how big of a deal that is? Literally by living your life, you are healing people. You're healing whole timelines. You are healing whole collectives. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of you are going to be making money in your career as being some kind of healer or some kind of artistic project or some kind of independent business where you will be um, being able to do healing in a more obvious way. And it is going to work out for you. <laughs> you know, who doesn't want to see this card? Part of fortune increase. So if your finances or just your physical abundance is in the gutter right now, Check this out. Better days are coming, guys. Better days are coming. You have already transcended your victimization timelines. Some of you might still just be getting out of it. Um, but even if you're, you know, maybe you're in a, an abusive relationship and you're still in the relationship. But if you're getting this video, you've already made the decision to get yourself out and to leave. And there might be some challenges ahead of you. That's going to be difficult, right, to, to get out and to get yourself safe. But... Yeah, if you've, you're seeing this, the hardest part is actually behind you because you've already, like deep down in your soul, you've already made that resolve. And of course you did because <laughs> before you incarnated here, it was part of your plan to go through that horrible relationship and go through these, face these challenges just so you can transcend them. So of course you're going to go get past them. It's part of your soul's blueprint. It's part of what you decided to do before you were born. So <laughs> it's it's just part of your purpose, guys. And yeah. Your magical ability is you guys are healers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is the end of your message. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Good luck on your journey. Hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Paul4, welcome to your reading. 
you guys have a lot of power hidden deep down in your soul. Your three tarot cards here are three major arcana. <laughs> the wheel, the world, and the emperor. The emperor happens to be in reverse, which we'll get to. So the wheel and just check out the imagery on this card. This deck is so detailed. I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera. This particular representation of the wheel reminds me of the Merkaba, your light body. Even take that out and expand that to your solar body. There is, you guys are astral travelers. You have some kind of, I almost want to call it a physical ability, but it's not really that. It's things like levitation, things that you would need to, need to, there are certain powers that we can activate once we activate our light body also known as your Merkaba or activating your rainbow body. You know, there's different layers to this, but you know, your energy body, if you will. Once you activate that, you can use that as a vehicle. And that's what you guys are doing. The details will be a little different for all of you. Some of you can levitate. Some of you can fucking fly, okay? <laughs> Some of you can walk through walls. Some of you will bilocate. Some of you will just teleport. Uh, you're all astrally traveling. Um, Some of you are already doing that in meditation and you know you consciously astrally travel. Others of you are traveling astrally in your sleep and not knowing it. Um, if you guys have had weird experiences, especially lately or in early childhood, when people thought you were sleepwalking, but you're pretty damn sure you weren't sleepwalking or just weird, weird things that people are telling you in your sleep, or maybe you find yourself sitting up in bed um, and you can't remember what you were just dreaming about, like, there's something about weird experiences with your sleep or with your dreams. That's because, you know, when we're distracted by our human conditioning and we can no longer do these things, we are like acting them out in our sleep. Essentially, we're experiencing them on the astral plane in our sleep. And you guys have activated your light bodies and you guys are using your Merkaba as a vehicle. You guys are absolutely traveling non-physically, essentially. I know there's all these like, you know, kind of weird connotations about astral travel. You know, all I mean when I say astral travel is your body is staying here and you are going elsewhere, right? And I say that because all, just all of this imagery is so much like the light body to me and the wheel that is, we have faces here. This is the potential of everything encompassed in yourself. And then we have the world Look at this powerful being with this eye coming right out of their solar plexus. This being is powerful as fuck and they know it. You guys know deep down in your bones, you know it, you know it. You guys have lots of flying dreams. When you guys were kids, did you, were you like convinced that you should be able to fly? Did you put like blankets around your shoulders and like jump off the couch and try to fly? <laughs> Stuff like that. Just, just, having this simmering low-grade frustration for your whole life about why can't I just lift off, right? Why, why can't I just appear somewhere else? Why is that wall an object for me? Well, guys, the object, the wall isn't really an object, you know? There is no spoon. <laughs> there is no spoon. And so there's something holding you guys back right now. Obviously, we're all being held back. Nobody's living their full potential on earth right now. This is the emperor in reverse, so we'll take a look at it straight up. This is the emperor. This is, wow, really similar to the representation of this being in the world card. All about the solar plexus, all about the self, all about sovereignty. The emperor can do whatever he fucking wants. Um, but right now it's reversed, which kind of vibe two ways on that. First of all, there's something holding you back. You know, you're not fully embodying yourself as the emperor. But also, since the card is reversed, I feel like that's really about to change. You just need to release something. And that is entirely reflected in these Oracle cards. South Node, Life's Debts, and Create Space. Create Space. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like you guys are kind of like plugged up kind of clogged. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't mean physically, although maybe some of you are clogged physically. <laughs> I mean, uh, energetically, like, 
a clogged or muddy or gunked up solar plexus chakra or like a really heavily conditioned root chakra or like a dysfunctional solar plexus chakra. A lot of this is your lower chakras, but also just the pranic channels in your body and your hara line, your hara line being essentially the umbilical cord that comes straight from source straight into you. you like some of that needs to be cleared out. Um, my, my personal experience is for me, the best way to clear out that kind of crap has been doing energy work. Um, you know, Sometimes I pay people, sometimes I, you know, find energy work for free online. Um, but you really need to find somebody you resonate with who does some kind of energetic transmission, some kind of healing, some kind of clearing designed at clearing your chakras or clearing your energy system or, you know, taking the intrusions out of your light body. You know, you're all going to have your own particular problems. But if you're like really serious on doubling down at this and on unlocking all of your full potential and, you know, setting yourself upright as the emperor, you need to clear out some space. And I really take this to mean literally there's a message for you guys to clear out your energetics, essentially. And I don't want to recommend anything because each of you will have, you know, different things that you resonate with. So just ask the universe to be led to the right kind of healing, the right kind of energy work for you. Some of you might be Reiki, for some of you might be seeing a shaman, for some of you it might just be meditating in a specific way. You know, you know, you don't, you, and I'm not telling you need to pay anybody to do this. You can do it all yourself <laughs> if you, uh, and you guys have the power to do that yourself. But, you know, it'll kind of speed things up and make it easier if you do work with somebody else. Um, but, you know, that I never physically go to anybody for this kind of healing or energy work. I do it all online. I just, I just receive uh, energetic transmissions and that can like majorly clear stuff out. I just, I recently had a personal experience guys where I did this clearing protocol and that night weird shit was happening. Let me tell you, creating space. This is important. This is really synchronizing for me. Actually, you create space and that lets you like download the, the your full light quotient, right? Download your full energetic template into you. And then that is how you will access all of these powers that you know, you've always known you had, and you've just been too blocked up, too clogged up, too muddy, too in your human conditioning to remember. And also, it, it, you know, don't beat yourself up about that. It wasn't time to remember these things yet. It wasn't time to remember. We were in a different paradigm, you know, but that paradigm is shifting out. And if you're watching this, you're part of the tipping point. You guys are part of the new, the new wave. I don't really like that phrase. There's too many connotations that I don't really like to resonate with but you know you're part of just this shift you guys are part of the shift part of the tipping point and i think for some of you you're going to be really really called to double down and explore this yeah because the more you can calibrate to your highest potential and the more you can manifest these abilities just the more that contributes to this rising pool of energy on the planet and uh yeah, so that we also had the South Node card. I know I mentioned it, but it basically went along along exactly with what I was saying about creating space and, you know, this reversed emperor of, you know, you have some stuff to clear out and you need to be aligning with your North Node. Don't be sitting in your South Node. Do not do not let your past hold you back. I don't know if you watched my spiel in the beginning, but I talked a little bit about how I was such a debunker and such like a, like beyond skeptical, right? I was just full on hardcore and debunking. You know, if you guys were like that, I think some of you were, that can really hold you back. That mentality, just think about how your skeptical mindset can be a limiting system. And how did that get installed there? Who is trying to limit you? What is trying to limit you? I mean, maybe you were limiting yourself. That's fine. And if somebody was trying to limit you and control you, I mean, so what? You guys can transcend that. These, any limitations anybody else has imposed on you guys are meaningless because you guys can just... Pff, like you're like suns, <laughs> you guys are like suns in the void, just blasting out. So any imposed conditioning, any limitations, any limita limiting thought paradigms, you guys can totally blast right past them. They're meaningless to you guys because you guys are so, you have so much potential to activate your, like the most expanded versions of your light bodies. So do not let your past hold you back. Do not let past paradigms hold you back. Do not let limiting belief systems and thought systems hold you back. Align with your nor north node, align with your destiny, align with the things you know deep down in your bones that you are meant for, that are your birthright. Align with those, resonate with those, just keep those in the back of your mind all the time. 
And I'm not saying that you guys are going to wake up tomorrow and like levitate, <laughs> you know, what I am saying is that if you continue down this path, if you align with your highest potential, if you keep doing the work, by the time you guys are at the end of your lives, you are not going to believe the shit that has changed. You know, I feel like by the end of 2020, anybody on a spiritual journey is not even going to believe the things that have shifted and the things that have changed and the things that have become possible for us. And that is just going to keep exponentially going more and more crazy as the years go by. So I think you guys should really be thinking long term, you know, don't get frustrated in six months if you guys haven't manifested something really specific. Just commit to the journey, commit to the process and trust the timing and trust the flow and that this will all unfold for you um, as it's supposed to in perfect cosmic timing. Because you guys are tuned into the cosmos on a really high level and you have all the potential. You just need to to tune into that. Yeah, but the danger for you guys is to get really frustrated and to start second guessing yourself and go, oh, you know, I haven't done this thing yet. <laughs> it must be impossible. I must be crazy. I should give up. No, set really long term goals. Like right now you could go, OK, I'm just going to go with the flow and see what unfolds for me. And I'm going to reassess it in 10 years. Like that's how long term I'm talking, even longer than that, because, you know, like I was saying that at the end of your lives, when you guys are 99 years old, you're going to look back at when you watch this video and go or, you know, this point in your life and go, wow, like, look at all this stuff that has happened. Look at all what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished and what I've achieved and how the planet has changed. I never would have believed any of that when I was 20, you know. So set your long term goals, go with the flow and just one day, guys, get ready to look back and have your minds blown. <laughs> I think that's that's what I'm seeing for you guys. That was your messages. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.